Our meeting next month is on. What's that? Yep. Great. I'd like to uh, call to order the meeting of the Already Board did. of Zoning Appeals. It is uh, August 11th, uh, 2020 at 6.30 p.m. And if you could all join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And we could call roll. Joshua Butler. Here. William Cook. Here. Christine Lawyer. Here. Alan Howe. Here. PJ Rodeback. Here. Thank you. So we've got a full board tonight. And I don't see any old business. Is there anything uh, old business for the record? No, sir. Okay. Thank you. Then moving on to new business. The first uh, variance application we have is VA 20 dash 012. Do we have a speaker for that and one? We do have Mr. Ronald Rhodes. All right. I'll vote for it. Thank you. Rhodes, welcome. How are you doing today? Very good. I hope you are too. Uh, we'll go ahead and get uh, started. We'll turn over to staff report. Thank you, sir. Like I said, this is VA 20012. Location of this one is at 90 Railroad Street, current acreage 0 0.2, and it's zoned R20, medium density residential. The applicant's requesting approval of a variance from section 1231.05C1 to build a deck that will fail to meet the required front yard setback of 50 feet. So if you look here, in yellow is an outline of the property. To the east, you've got Railroad Street running north and south, and to the south, you've got Second Avenue running east to west. So, property is currently occupied by approximately 1,500 square foot single family home and a 100 square foot shed. It's adjacent to two right of ways Railroad Street to the east, Second Avenue to the south. It is a non-conforming lot of record, meaning that it does not meet the minimum requirements of the R20 zoning district, which are 20,000 square feet and 100 feet minimum width. Currently, it's about 8,712 square feet and only 50 feet wide. In addition to that, the structure is non-conforming existing. So when adjacent to all right-of-ways, or excuse me, when adjacent to a right-of-way, it shall have the same front yard setback for all sides that are adjacent to it. Here's a little table showing the required R20 setbacks of 50 feet in the front, 20 from the sides, and 25 from the rear. Currently, it's only 14 feet from 2nd Avenue, 34 and a half feet from Railroad Street, 6 and a half feet from the north side property line, and it is compliant with the rear setback at 75 feet. Again, here's a closer look at the property. You can see it's quite a small lot, and there's non-conforming setbacks on the sides. So the proposal is to construct an 11 by 14 foot deck on the south side of the home. It will have steps on the east and west sides of the deck. It will be set back from the front property line on 2nd Avenue, a total of 3 feet. It will be 24 feet from the west face of the home, 22 feet from the east face. The applicant stated in their narrative statement that they do not believe the variance requested will be detrimental to surrounding properties, and they believe that their predicament cannot be obviated through any other methods. Here's a look at the proposal. The site plan is submitted by the Afghan. You got about three feet from the property line to the edge of the deck here. And there's a little overlay about what approximately that would look like on the, on the home itself. So as part of our review, uh, section 122107B1I says that decks patio shall meet all required front yard setbacks. Again, in R20, this is 50 feet. However, the current structure is only 14 feet from the property line on 2nd Avenue, and any further expansion into that front yard requires a variance. So the proposed setback of the deck is to be 3 feet, so the variance itself is for 47 feet from the required 50 foot setback, or a 94% reduction. The east yard, <coughs> excuse me, the east front yard railroad street setback is compliant at 54.5 feet, 
and although the deck will be three feet from the property line, currently the house sits about 37 and a half feet from the edge of the road, so with the addition of that deck, it'll be about 26 and a half feet from the edge of the road. Staff has no other concerns with the proposal. We did not receive any other comments from any other departments or agencies, and we did receive one letter from the neighbor to the north of this property uh, that's on your dais there, stating they are in support of the variance. Surrounding properties to the north, east, south, and west are all zoned R20, medium density to residential, and they are all single family homes. Here are your findings of fact, are also printed there in your staff report. And should the board choose to approve the applicant's request, the following conditions may be considered. The applicant shall obtain all necessary permits from the City of Patasco and the Lincoln County Building Department within one year of the date of approval. And if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Um, I'm just trying to, I think it, you answered all, a couple of them already, but uh, it says the structure is non-conforming, and that's because the lot is too, or, too small, it can't possibly conform? So there's two ways it's non-conforming. It's a non-conforming lot of record, meaning that the lot itself does not meet the minimum requirements of the lot area and lot width, and then the structure is non-conforming because it does not meet the setbacks of the zoning district that it's in. And the lot width itself is how much? So the required for R20 is 100 feet width. However, the lot itself right now is only about 50 feet. Right. 50 feet. I mean, from the edge of the uh, property, both sides. Yes. So, okay. And the deck that's being proposed is only going to be three feet from the property line, but I think you said 14 feet from Second Street? Uh, I think it was 26 and a half feet from Second Street. So you can kind of see where your property line ends is where the city's right of way begins, but the Second Avenue isn't exactly on that property line. So, got about 26 and a half feet from the edge of the road to where the deck would begin. And is there any um, easements of record that we should be thinking about? There are not on this property. Okay. Was, was this property from before Patascala had was out there when it was part of uh, the township? I believe this was Old Lima Township. Yes, yeah, so this would have been Old Lima Township. Yep. So when they merged the two zoning maps we'll find instances similar to this where it's created some, some issues. Okay, thank you. Anyone else have uh, questions for staff? No. Okay, well we do have a speaker, Mr. Rhodes. If you, uh, Ms. Rhodes, if you could uh, step up to the podium and raise your right hand and Lisa will swear you in over here. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shall be done? I do. Thank you. Is there um, any points that, uh, that we haven't heard already that you'd like to bring up about your application? Well, no, just that uh, we're just trying to upgrade the house. When we first tried to buy it, the, we couldn't even get it inspected. Uh, the inspector just left during okay. that. So we had to pay cash to get it, but we've we put a lot of money trying to upgrade the house. We just put siding on it. It only had one exit in the back. We had a little platform that goes through the kitchen. Really wasn't even safety, you know, uh, safe to have that as an exit. If you had a bar in the kitchen, it would just you wouldn't be able to have an exit there. Mm -hmm. And then they had the front door one. So, so we we wanted to put another exit to the side, which was the patio door. So we put that in when we had the siding done. And we put another exit in the rear so we'd have some, you know, safety precautions in case of an emergency. And since we put the patio doors in there, I mean, we could put steps down, but it would be nice if we could have a deck. We could put a grill out there and be able to grill out. We mm -hmm. thought it would be an upgrade to the area and to our property. So you have um, a sliding door there now and you, um, in addition to the, the steps on both ends of the deck plant? Yes. Okay, and did you know about this this restriction before you bought the property? No, I did. We didn't know about it. Okay, thank you. Does anyone ha uh, have any other questions? Any questions for Mr. Rhodes? No. And according to your neighbor, Miss <coughs> Moore, Kathy Moore, she's, yeah. she apparently has uh, uh, made positive comments about uh, the, the improved appearance of the, of the home. 
just really good. Is there any other questions or any comments that you want for us? No, I, I kind of said all I can say about <laughs> it. Just, you know, right. I just want to improve our, our property in our area, and, and I don't want to try and downgrade anybody else's I appreciate property that. by doing that. Thank you so much. Go ahead and have a seat. Okay. Thank you. Any other discussion you would like to have for the findings of fact? No. All right, then I have the findings of fact here for VA 20 012. And the first one, A, is whether the property in question will yield a reasonable return or if there can be a beneficial use of the property. And I would say yes. 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 Any issues on that? Whether there is, are unique physical circumstances or conditions that prohibit the property being developed in strict conformity with the zoning regulations, such that a variance is necessary to enable the reasonable use of the property. You know, the undersized lot is certainly a unique condition, circumstance, I'd say. Yes. Yes. C, whether the variance requested is substantial, at 94%, I'd have to say yes. 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 D, whether the essential character of the neighborhood would be substantially altered or the adjoining properties would suffer a substantial detriment as a result of the variance. No. And I'd say no. no. I think it would be just fine. E, whether the variance if granted will substantially or permanently impair the appropriate use or development of adjacent property. Shouldn't that affect the appraised property at all? So no? Good. F, whether the variance granted will be detrimental to the public welfare. No. Mm, should have no impact, so we'll say no on that. Whether the variance of granted would adversely affect the delivery of government services. Mm, no. no, there's no reason any of those that can't still access from the two roads. H, whether the property owner purchased the subject property with knowledge of the zoning restriction. And Mr. Rhodes testified that he did not uh, know of it, so that would be a no. I, whether the property owner's predicament can be obviated through some other method than variance. And if there's going to be a deck, there's n because of the size of the lot, there's no other way he could do it besides variance. I guess the only other way he could do it is to not have a deck. Right. So I'm going to say no for this. Are we okay with that? Yes. Correct. Okay, no. <laughs> J, whether the variance, if granted, will represent the minimum variance that will afford relief and represent the least modification of the requirement at issue. And yes, and again, yes, it's yeah. a very, <coughs> yes. so we're okay with yes? Is that small lot? Doesn't have much, much choice on that. And K, whether the spirit and intent behind the zoning requirement would be observed and substantial justice done by granting the variance. And I believe it would. Are you okay with yes? Yep. Yes. Yep. Yes. Done. Right. So, for the findings of fact, we have yes for A, B, C, J, and K, and then we have no for D, E, F, G, H, and I. Is there any other discussion? So anyone would like to create a motion? So moved. Mm -hmm. uh, I move to approve a variance from the zoning Motion and we have a second. Second, yes. Thank you. Uh, motion and a second. Any discussion? No. No discussion. Can we take roll? Mr. Rodeback. Yes. Mr. Howe. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Bl Mr. Butler. Yes. Ms. Lawyer. Yes. Uh, it is unanimous. Yes. Uh, the request is approved, Mr. Rhodes. And. Um, the staff will be getting with you in the next few days, let you know what any next steps are, uh, at least from the Board of Zoning Appeals, and we appreciate uh, 
the upgrading of the area and good luck with the, uh, the changes. Well, thank you guys for your time and effort and making the approval. I certainly do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck with it then. Thank you. Guess we're back online now. Uh, we're looking at variance application VA 20 013. Um, applicant Stacy Lewis, owner Stacy and Darren Lewis. You can go ahead and have a step. Thank you, sir. Uh, location of this one's at 313 Eddington Drive. Current acreage is 0 0.27. Zoned PDD Plan Development District. And they are requesting approval of a variance from section 1297.02b2 to allow for the pumps and filters associated with the swimming pool to be closer than the required 20 feet from a property line. So we'll take a look here and see the parcel in question outlined in yellow. We've got Eddington Drive to the east here, and behind this property to the west is actually out of our jurisdiction, that's in Reynolds Reynoldsburg. So currently occupied by 1,549 square foot single family home and 180 square foot accessory building. Access to the properties via a concrete driveway onto Eddington. And there's an existing tree line along the south side of the property line where it adjoins the HOA reserve area. And you take a closer look here at the existing conditions on the property. You got that tree line separating the home itself from the HOA property accessory building up here in the north. So the proposal is to construct a 29 foot by eight inch by 15 foot one inch in ground pool, surrounded by a concrete patio off the rear of home with dimensions of 44 feet, eight inches by 31 feet. The pool's gonna be in the southwest corner of the patio with three feet of concrete between the edge of the pool and the edge of the patio. The total impervious coverage of this will be 1,385 square feet. So here's a look at the proposal, you can see our pool here down in the southwest corner of the patio with the patio, oh, excuse me. You got three feet of concrete between the pool and the patio on the south and west sides and more patio up here connecting to the house. So setbacks are 21 feet to the south side property line, 26 feet to the north side property line and 41 feet to the rear property line. The pumps and filters are to be 13 feet eight inches away from the south side property line. The applicant bid state uh, that they'll be installing a six foot tall fencing around the lot. So again, here's a look at the proposal with the setbacks. Um, these don't match because you have the three feet additional concrete on the side. So you got that 21 feet to the south side property line, 41 feet to the rear property line, and the 
So, section 1297.02b2 states that pump and filter installations shall not be closer than 20 feet to any property line. They are proposed at 13 feet 8 inches. That's the request for the variance. This is the location of the pumps and the filters on the south side of the home, 13 feet and 8 inches away from the property line. In the narrative statement that was submitted by the applicant, they stated there was no other place to locate the equipment without requiring a variance. They also stated that the pump and filters are being closed by a six foot privacy fence and they do not believe that the uh, excuse me do not believe that the variance requested is detrimental and that they purchased the property without knowledge of the zoning restrictions part of our review staff would offer the following comments section 1297.02b2 states that pools including any walks and paved areas etc must be located a minimum of 10 feet away from a property line or an easement the distance to the property lines are, are okay however there are the distances to the rear easement have not been identified. The easement begins at 32 feet and angles inward towards the house as it moves south, with the pool being 44 feet from the property line and an additional three feet of concrete outside of it. The distance between the edge of the walk and the easement would only be nine feet, and this would decrease further as the easement angles in to be around four to six feet. So another variance is actually needed in this case, and we did supply a supplementary condition if the board so chooses. So you can see here, we got the easement starting at 32 feet, and then it starts breaking in towards the house here that moves south from the lot. I mean, there's only nine feet on the bigger end here between the, ed the edge of the walk and the easement, getting down to around four to six feet. So the pool uh, must be surrounded by a fence that's less than no less than five feet in height. The applicant stated on the site plan that there was gonna be a four foot fence. However, staff spoke with the applicant who, conf who confirmed the correct height is actually six feet. There's just an error made on the site plan. And we actually did just issue a permit for this for a six foot fence height. The applicant also said they will install a six foot fence around the pumps and filters. Staff would like to see this reflected in the plans. However, we do not have any other concerns. We did not receive any other comments from any other departments or agencies. Surrounding properties, so to the north, east, and south are zoned plan development district, which are single family homes in the Brooks Edge subdivision, and to the south is a reserve area of the HOA and the playground, and to the west is Jefferson Township, actually, and some multifamily residential. So, here are your findings of fact, and also there in your staff report. So, should the, should the board choose to approve the applicant's request, the following conditions may be considered. The first one being the applicant shall obtain all necessary permits from the City of Pataskala and the Lincoln County Building Department within one year of the date of approval. Two, the applicant shall indicate the correct fence height with a minimum height of five feet and, and location of the fence when submitting for the zoning permit. And three, being the Board of Zoning Appeals shall grant a variance from section 1297.02b2 to allow for the pool, including any walks, paved areas, and appurtenances <laughs> there too to be located closer than 10 feet from the rear easements, provided those do not encroach within the easements. And if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. So really, we have this application for one variance. However, there is um, two that need to be addressed, correct? Correct, correct. And the one variance of the pool pump and equipment um, being on the south side, right? Correct. Um, basically, we'll look at the, uh, the, the, the the plot. I'm not sure that I see a whole lot of other places either. And it's, it's basically facing the um, park area. Or yes. The HOA. It would be on the south side of the home facing the uh, HOA reserve area. And that line of trees won't be affected? That's correct. Okay. And if it was the concrete walkway, it wouldn't need a variance, it's only because it's a pump. Correct. <clears throat> now, so the question then becomes of the easement, and do we know what the easement's for? Uh, I believe it's just a drainage easement, and it's it's actually two overlapping easements. you got a 32-foot drainage easement, and then there's a 30-foot no-build zone in the back. And that back is the natural barrier between that and the Reynoldsburg uh, Residences, correct? Uh, it didn't state on the plats specifically what the no build zone was for, but I I would assume that it's probably for a buffer between that and any other multifamily development behind it. And the entire 
pool structure, I guess, uh, walkway and pool would be within that variance. Nine feet is the, is the largest space from the easement. Uh, yeah, nine feet is the largest space. And 10 uh, feet is the... You can zone. see right here, the, the easement kind of curves in towards the house. Right. So this distance would get shorter as it goes on right. to around four to six feet from the edge of the easement to the edge of the concrete. And the thought process behind this provision in the code is if we had an underground storm line, water line, sewer line, the area of influence that you need at least 10 feet because if you dig right next to the pool, it's gonna collapse. As we've seen, this is a no build zone and it looks like it's just a stormwater easement, natural drainage, so it seems to be, and I don't know the thought process behind this, why, I don't know why they would make the easement that big. So since there's nothing underground, staff doesn't have concerns that if you know there was a water main break, they have to go dig it up, that right. now we're impacting the pool. Okay, so we're, we're sure that it's not, there's nothing underground here. It's all natural drainage. That's correct. Okay, that makes more sense to me. Is there any uh, questions from the board, from the staff? <coughs> All right, we have Mr. Lewis here. Yes. Mr. Lewis, if you come up to the podium, we'll have you uh, raise your right hand and have Lisa swear you in. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I'll be back? Yes. Thank you. Right. Uh, well, thank you for coming out today and your patience. Um, and I think uh, we saw it in the staff report you, you weren't aware of this zoning restriction when you bought the property. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Do you have any other comments or questions that you th that we should be considering? No, I just to point out again, he covered it in the uh, very detailed write up that you know the uh, pool commitment will be enclosed by a six foot privacy fence as well. So you know we didn't feel that would have any negative impact. It won't be visible from um, you know, anywhere outside. So my understanding is you already pulled the permit and it has mm -hmm. in those plans six foot. Yes, sir. Um, we will leave. I think. Um, the supplementary condition number two in because it uh, I don't think you're or we need to be sure that we have that, that height around your um, equipment. Yep. Yeah, it's actually going to be six foot. Okay. So we'll be good there. So we definitely have that uh, correct on the permit okay. application. Absolutely. Thank you. Yep. Anything else? Any questions for Mr. Lewis? No. no. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Awesome. Go ahead. Thank you. Sit down. Being said, I think I'm, I'm, I was concerned about the the uh, easement, but if it's just a natural drainage, I mean, this is, shouldn't have any effect. And the, in my opinion, uh, that um, pump area is just basically facing the, the park area. So it's right. actually a, probably a better place yeah. than if they had put it on. Yeah, I, I was questioning if there were other houses that might bother right. And so I, they actually they've got the, their house as a buffer, so that makes that really good, I think. That being said, any other uh, discussion? We we'll go to findings of fact. Uh, I have a question before yes. we do that. We're just considering this one uh, application, correct? We're not considering the uh, the easement application, or are we? Well, what we're doing is we we're looking at number three. There is basically. Um, letting them, yeah. we're approving that variance. So That's the only variance we're approving? No, we're actually approving two variances. Um, okay. Because That's we're adding it in as a supplemental condition okay. so that Mr. Evans doesn't have, or Mr. Lewis, I'm sorry, it doesn't have to go and do this uh, whole procedure again. Yeah, that makes sense. I just wanted to be sure. I nope, very good question. Any other, anything else for findings of fact? Okay, findings of fact, A, whether the property in question will yield a reasonable return or if there can be a beneficial use of the property. Obviously, I think that's it. Yes, yes. everybody okay with yes? B, whether there are unique physical circumstances or conditions that prohibit the property being developed in strict conformity with the zoning regulations such that a variance is necessary to enable the reasonable use of the property. Yes. 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 The, uh, basically, the layout of the, of the, the plot. C, whether the variance requested is substantial? I don't believe it is. No, I believe it's, it's pretty, you okay with no? Yes. 
Okay? <laughs> D, whether the essential character of the neighborhood would be substantially altered or the adjoining properties would suffer a substantial detriment as a result of the variance. No. It should have no effect, so no good. E, whether the variance of granted will substantially or permanently impair the appropriate use or development of adjacent property. No. No. Has really no effect on that property next to it. F, whether the variance of granted will be detrimental to the public welfare. Yeah. Yeah. Don't see any impact. Whether the variance of granted would adversely affect the delivery of government services. And it's again, no, doesn't seem to be blocking any any areas. H, whether the property owner purchased the subject property with the knowledge of the zoning restrictions. He testified no, and it was in the, the staff report. So that'd be no. I, whether the property owner's predicament can be obviated through some other method than variance. In this case, I don't see any other. Yeah. No. J, whether the variance if granted would, would represent or will represent the minimum variance that will afford relief and represent the least modification possible of the requirement at issue. I think that's a yes. 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 Seems to pretty straightforward. And K, whether the spirit and intent behind the zoning requirement will be observed and substantial justice done by granting the variance. Yes. Yes, I agree. Okay, again, on this uh, variance 20-013, we have yes for A, B, J, and K. And we have no for C, D, E, F, G, H, and I. Do we have any other discussion or questions? No. 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 Then can we get a motion? I move to approve a variance from section 1297.02B2 for variance application BA 20013 with supplementary conditions. The applicant shall obtain all necessary permits from the city of Pataskala and Licking, the Licking County Building Department within one year of the day of approval. The applicant shall indicate the correct fence height with a minimum height of five feet and the location of the fence when submitting for their zoning permit and the Board of Zoning Appeals shall grant a variance from section 1297.02B2 to allow for the pool, including any walks, paved areas, and appurtenances thereto to be located closer than 10 feet from the rear easements, provided those do not encroach within the easements. So we have a motion. Do we have a second? Thank you. A motion and a second. Any uh, additional discussion? Hearing none. Uh, can we have roll, please? Mr. Cook? Yes. Ms. Lawyer? Yes. Mr. Butler? Yes. Mr. Howe? Yes. Ms. Rodebeck? Yes. Thank you. We have a unanimous uh, decision. Their request has been approved. Um, Mr. Lewis? And again, am I supposed to talk about some 30 uh, day appeals? We can follow up with them in regard to that. Okay. The staff will be following up uh, next request and then, and then the appeal process if, if there is any. Um, I, I didn't ask, but I think I already knew that answer. We didn't have any neighbors on, on this that were any neighbor input. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Kind of late to ask. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very, very much, Mr. Morris. Yeah. Thank you, guys. So we will uh, 
The next uh, item on the agenda is the variance application VA 20-014. Applicant Ryan Badger, ADR, ADR Associates, and owner the M, uh, Howard and Rosemary as well, trustees. That's correct. Uh, the location is, it's, it's on two properties at this point. It's on the northeast corner of uh, Etna Parkway and Refugee Road. The plan is to split off eight, eight and a half acres. Zone plan manufacturing and the, the request is approval of a variance from section 1283-07B to forego, forego the installation of required perimeter screening along the northeast and half of the southern portions of the property. So current properties total 98 acres. This is located in the corporate park, currently used for agriculture and the property that they will be split currently and when they split it off will have about a 10,000 square foot barn on the property. As I mentioned, they're looking to split eight and a half acres in, t in order to construct a race car manufacturing facility. So as Mr. Cook mentioned, the variance application VA 20003 was approved on March 10th, 2020. Uh, this was to construct uh, the race car facility on the northwest portion of Refugee and at the Parkway. Um, the property on the northwest portion of Refugee and Etna Parkway is located in what's called a Joint Economic Development District, or a JET. And essentially the impetus of what happened is when the corporate park went in, the city did not have a income tax. So the thought was, if companies locate in this area, there is not going to be any revenue coming in to the city. So they passed the JED. JEDs are in conjunction with other entities such as Harrison Township, City of Newark are all included in this JED. Um, that was passed in December of 09. In December of 10, the city passed its income tax. So now there's a 1% income tax and a 1.5% income tax. So originally, as we were looking on the northwest side, we were looking for some, some creative ways to make that work. Unfortunately, it did not work. So the facility chose to relocate to the northeast corner thereby avoiding the jet. And the project needs a favorable tax rate to make this work. Um, previously, they had a plan manufacturing application through the planning and zoning department that was also approved in March. They just went back uh, earlier this month on the 5th. It was formally approved on the 10th for the northeast portion. So they have gotten their approvals from the planning and zoning commission. So here is the rough approximation of what they'll be splitting off. If you recall, the other the other facility was to go in this location. So the total, it's somewhat misleading, the total 95 acres is there's a sliver right here on the east side of Edna Parkway that is also tied to this parcel. So that's why it looks much larger than it actually is. So the facility Everything's the same. It's compliant with everything but landscaping. So the proposal would require L2 landscaping along all frontages. Um, previously, they wanted to do it just along the front of the building and the side. They're essentially taking what was approved previously on the west side and just applying that to the east side. So we can see here the, the green lines mirror where the landscaping would go. Here is uh, Etna Parkway, here's Refugee Road, north is to the left. And these two building faces would have the landscaping installed. Um, so, same narrative as last time. Um, essentially the same thing as last time. <laughs> and we talked about the previous approvals for other landscaping variances for the AP properties currently in the corporate park. We had no other concerns. No other concerns from other departments and agencies. Uh, northeast and west, all zone plan manufacturing, all used for agriculture. To the south is the <coughs> Township, also for agriculture, but with a single family home. Again, the findings of fact up here and in your staff reports. And should you choose to approve the application, the one supplementary condition we offer is that the applicant shall obtain all necessary permits from the City of Pataskala and the Licking County Building Department. Aside from that, happy to answer any questions. It's 
I guess, a mirror image of, of what we approved several months ago, with, with the exception of instead of that drainage pond, there's a barn there now, right? That's correct. And is the barn part of this business that we should consider landscaping on the south side of that? The barn will be on the facility's lot. However, it would not be used in conjunction with the business. Um, from what my understanding is, is that Mr. Ensweiler leases that barn out to another family to use as part of their agricultural practices. Right. Um, it looks like the owner of the facility will allow that lease to continue for a few more years. I don't know the specifics yeah. of how long that right. will be there. So is that not, I mean, essentially it works as screening, it's just not landscaping screening. That's correct. Any other questions for staff? No. Oh. Okay, we do have a, uh, Mr. Fox, right? If you can step up to the podium, please. And raise your right hand, and Lisa will swear you in. You swear or affirm the testimony about the gift is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shall be done. I do. Thank you. Mr. Fox, just for the record, can you state your name and address and your, I don't see you on the application, so your association with the application. Tony Fox, 1474 High Point Drive, Newark, Ohio. I am the contractor representing Mike there in Indianapolis for the 500 this weekend. So. Gotcha. <laughs> Thank you. Is there anything? Uh, more you'd like to, to add to the I'm the, just here to answer questions if you have any. Uh, the quick answer on the barn is Howard bought the property from the guy that's renting it. In his agreement when he bought the property, he agreed to let him use it for a number of years. Mm -hmm. um, this is a little earlier than Howard thought he'd resell it. Mm -hmm. Mike Shank has agreed to let the guy continue to use it. There's no time set. It's an indefinite time. It's just, as long as everybody's getting along and agreeing, I'm assuming it's going to stay there. Until the, well, the agricultural land turns into something different. And, and honestly, I'm sure that's more of what it is. Until that's that right. corner becomes more valuable or something else. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Fox? No. No? Okay. Thank you for the Have a seat. Again, it seems like we've we just talked about this. Uh, I don't have any other comments or questions, discussion. Does anybody have any? No. That being said, we will go to the findings of fact for um, the variance application 20-014. A is whether the property in question will yield a reasonable return or if there can be a beneficial use of the property. Obviously, it would be beneficial use. So yeah. Are you okay with yes? yes? Yes. B, whether there are unique physical circumstances or conditions that prohibit the property being developed in strict conformity with the zoning regulations such that a variance is necessary to enable a reasonable use of the property. I don't think there are. They didn't say no. They didn't say no, because they could certainly put it all the way around. It's just that you might be decorating it for the cornfield. Right? So mm -hmm. The answer is no. We go with that. C, whether the variance requested is substantial? No. 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 Good, but no. D, whether the essential character of the neighborhood would substantially be altered or the adjoining properties would suffer a substantial detriment as a result of the variance. And the essential character of the neighborhood will definitely be substantially altered. But, I, but it wouldn't suffer. So, I mean, this could be a yes or no. I don't think it would be because of the variance, though. Mm, no. So we'll say, everybody comfortable with, with no on that? No. I'm going to say no. Okay. E, whether the variance, if granted, will substantially or permanently impair the appropriate use or development of the adjacent property? No. Doesn't, shouldn't have any effect on that. No. no. F, whether the variance, if granted, will be detrimental to the public welfare? No impact there. No. G, whether the variance of granted would adversely affect the delivery of government services. Should have no impact, so no on that. H, whether the property owner purchased the subject property with knowledge of the zoning restriction. 
And in this case, since we went over it in March, I'm going to say yes. They obviously knew about it this time. Yeah. Yeah. Purchasing the other property. So yes. I, whether the property owner's predicament can be obviated through some other method than variance. Um, again, I'd have to say yes. They could put the screening all the way around. Agreed. Yeah. Okay. So we'll come through with yes. J, whether the variance if granted would represent the minimum variance that will afford relief and represent the least modification pro possible of the requirement at issue. And that I would definitely say yes. I mean, yes. Just modifying it to <coughs> kind of meet the needs of it. And K, whether the spirit and intent behind the zoning requirement would be observed and substantial justice done by granting the variance. Yes. Yes. Yes, I agree. No problems there. So we have on this one, yes, uh, for questions A, H, I, J, and K. And we have no for questions B, C, D, E, F, and G. That being said, is there any other discussion? No. And can I get a motion? I move to approve the variance from section 1283.07B of the variance application VA. Dash two zero dash zero one four with the following supplemental conditions. The applicant shall obtain all necessary permits from the city of Tesla and the Licking County Building Department. Thank you. Got a motion on the floor. Do I have a second? Second. Got a second. Any discussion? No. Hearing none. Can we have a roll? Mr. Butler. Yes. Ms. Lawyer. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Ms. Rodebeck. Yes. Mr. Howe. Yes. Okay. So the request has been approved. Thank you, Mr. Fox. Thank you. Staff will be getting uh, back with you in the very near future about the appeals process and uh, any other activities that have to be done. Okay. So thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Okay, so that ends any new business at this point. Next would be findings of fact, and I will go ahead and uh, make the motion that we accept the findings of fact for variance application 20-012 as discussed uh, earlier in the meeting. Second. We've got a motion and a second, and we have roll, or any discussion? No. Roll, please. Mr. Howe? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Ms. Rudderbeck? Yes. Ms. Lawyer? Yes. Mr. Butler? Yes. Thank you. That uh, motion passed and those findings of facts are accepted. I make it, I move to, to accept the findings of fact for variance application 20-013 as discussed earlier. Uh, uh, can I get a second? Second. Thank you. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Nope. Hearing none. Can we have a roll? Ms. Rodebeck? Yes. Mr. Butler? Yes. Mr. Howe? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Ms. Lawyer? Yes. Thank you. And finally, I move to accept the uh, findings of fact for application number VA-20-014 as discussed earlier. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you. We've got a motion and a second. Any uh, additional discussion? Hearing, hearing none. Roll, please. Ms. Lawyer? Yes. Ms. Rodebeck? Yes. Mr. Butler? Yes. Mr. Howe? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Thank you. The findings of fact are accepted. That being said, next item on agenda is approval of minutes. And hopefully everyone uh, had an opportunity to um, read them in the um, packet we received ahead of time um, or even this evening. And if so, is there any comments or questions on the, on the minutes? Additions, deletions, edits. No. Um, I'd like to uh, make a motion to approve the July 14th, 2020 uh, meeting minutes as uh, presented. Can I get a second? Second. Got a second? Any discussion? Hearing none, can we get roll, please? Mr. Cook? Yes. Mr. Howe? Yes. Mr. Butler? Yes. Mr. Rebecca? Yes. Ms. Lawyer? Yes. 
Thank you. So those are accepted as written. Next item on my agenda is other business. Is there anything that we should uh, be discussing or talk about? Or yes, sir. Hearing none, can I get a uh, motion to adjourn? Move we adjourn. Thank you. A second? Second. Awesome. Roll, please. Mr. Odebeck? Yes. Mr. Howe? Yes. Ms. Lawyer? Yes. Mr. Butler? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Thank you. With that, we will adjourned. Thank you. You want to hang around a little longer, <laughs> Christine? Sure. <laughs> All right, so this is the 11th, right? Okay. Uh, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. I think we're due for something intense coming up. We do? Huh? I think we're overdue for something intense. She said it gets insane. I was like, really? I was checking the score throughout the video. I'll be like, are we recording stuff? Oh. About to play two hockey games in one.